What's poppin' homies? It's your favorite homegirl that's cool. Let's get into this commentary. Hey homies, so I have an update on the Bajana James case. All right, they did arrest someone. They arrested her boyfriend. Thank God for that. They did arrest him. So we're going to go ahead and get into that. And then I'm going to follow with two other stories of a woman that was missing since November of 2021 and a man who was found in the trunk of his car. And it's just like, what is going on, people? You know, we can ask ourselves that all day, every day. But the thing is, will we get an answer? We can say what's going on, why would they do this all day, every day, until we turn blue in the face. But guess what? Will we get an answer? And nine times out of ten, we don't. Okay, so we've got to go ahead and get into this. Now, the man that murdered um, Bajana James, he's 35 years old, and his name is Nashawn Walsh. He was picked up by the police Saturday and charged with murdering the mother of two. Okay, now we know that her brother found her with the fatal knife wound inside her apartment in the Bronx. All right, she told family members that she was scared for her life. We know that he, uh, that Nashawn Walsh slit her throat. And this is just days after she told relatives that she was scared of her boyfriend. Okay, so my next question is why? Why would he do this to her? And, you know, I've seen in other cases where the police will sit there and interrogate the person and ask them all these questions. And they have the nerve to be tight-lipped. Okay? Like, they don't want to say nothing. You owe the family every explanation on why you took this young lady's life. You owe it to her family. She, they, Her family needs justice. Her children need justice. And I'm glad he's caught. But why would he do this? It's time to start getting some answers. What was the motive behind this? Okay. There's no, that's not, it's not a time to be all tight mouth. Don't know. Don't do that. Don't, don't get quiet now. You wasn't quiet when you took her life. Okay. So don't get quiet now. You owe the family every explanation of which, why you did what you did. He owes it to them. Just to he, you know, just to read the text messages they have here that she was like texting her cousins and saying, you know, he's bugging out, he's gonna kill me, I'm scared for my life, you know. Um, and she said that to her cousin. He left the house, he's back, and then after that, no one hear from heard from her until they went to go do like a wellness check to check on her to see if everything was okay. And her brother found her like that. Now, Nashawn Walsh has 11 prior unsealed arrests dating back to 1995, mostly for robbery and assault, police said. He has a history as both the perpetrator and victim of domestic violence, the cop said. It is unclear whether James was involved in any of the previous incidents. Now, they also say he was living with her. Okay. So that's what they have here. But I'm glad that they did get him. Now, where's the picture of Mr. Nashawn Walsh? Where's his picture? Why isn't his picture being put out all over the place so we can get so we can see what he looks like? Why isn't his picture in the news articles? Give me a second. Let me go check my other source. Okay, so while I'm searching for a picture, the police have yet said that they don't know what, you know, what, you know, why he attacked Vagina James. And it wasn't immediately clear if there was any relationship between, you know, Nashawn and James. That's what another article is saying. Because sometimes when you go from different articles, the articles, they say different things. Okay, so... I just want to know, where's his picture? Okay, where is his picture? Where is his picture? I'm still looking and I don't see it. But you know what? His mugshot will be out there soon enough. 
So we will see what he looks like. But my thing is this. They should have put the picture out there of what he looked like so we can see what he looked like. Okay? Because you got to be some type of monster to do that. I mean, to cut her throat and then leave the knife on her chest and then you're going to clean the knife down? Oh, yeah. You're a monster. You are definitely a monster. Mm -mm -mm. Like I said, guys, I'm so glad they did that they did catch him. I am so happy. I am so happy. And I kind of feel bad for his family because they got to go through, you know, the looks and all types of stuff that people may give them. And nobody wants, you know, wants to be affiliated with that. You get what I'm saying? Like, come on. I know somebody in his family got to be ashamed of what he has done. And he probably doesn't even feel bad. That's the thing. He probably doesn't even feel bad. Absolutely ridiculous. Okay, so, you know, send your love and prayers to her mother and all the rest of her family members because they're going to need it. And those poor babies, you know, they're going to need all the love and prayers. You know, keep being there for the family because they're going to need it. They are going to need it. You know, and I, de I definitely send my deepest condolences and prayer to the family. I really do. I really do. Okay, guys, so let's get on to the next news. Now, the next news is this. Human remains found in Mississippi identified as missing Memphis woman. And she's beautiful. She's a pretty young lady. Mm. Now, she disappeared November of 2021. And the Memphis police say the remains found in Charleston were identified as 27-year-old Ashley McDonald. She was last seen on November 25th on Night Trail Circle and was reported missing in December, according to a Memphis Police Department city watch. Now, police believe she was in Batesville meeting an unknown. The Tallahatchie Police Department is investigating McDonald's death, we are reaching out to learn more about the investigation. So this news circle is trying to find out more about what happened to Ashley McDonald. Okay. And they said that she was meeting up with an unknown. Let me tell you something, guys. Okay. Everybody that's listening. When you meeting up with somebody, you have to leave a trail. What I mean by that, you have to leave messages to your friends and family members. Hey, I'm going out on a date. I'm meeting someone, so and so at this place. When you get there, you see the person. Hey, I'm at this person. He's wearing this. He's wearing that. And vice versa for the men. Okay? You have to leave a trail. So if anything happens to you, guess what? Your friends and your family members can tell the police exactly what you were wearing, what he was wearing, and where the last, um, what it was last seen. Okay, you you know, cause nowadays these people people out here are crazy. People out here are crazy. Mm -mm -mm. And it also says here, it was believed that she was headed to Batesville, Mississippi to meet an unknown male. McDonald is possibly driving a 13 to 14 black Ford Fusion with drive out tags. Okay. Authorities said that McDonald was traveling to meet an unknown man when she went missing. She was last seen in the 3200 block of Night Circle, Night Trail Circle in Memphis. Her car was later found abandoned in Tallahatchie County in December. Few other details about the case have been released and the cause of death remains under investigation. Now, Charleston is about 90 miles south of Memphis, Tennessee. I really do hope 
and they find the person that's responsible for this. I really do. I really do hope they find the person responsible. Okay? I really do hope so. Now, another story that I would like to talk to you about is a woman named Dana Holt. Dana Holt, 30 years old, was in Dallas when she made the call to her mother on March 2nd, according to family members, okay? She sounded terrified and scared. Wherever she was, there was a man holding her against her will. Dana said, he won't let me leave. And that's what Audrey Clay, Dana's um, older sister, had told the news station. Now, Deborah Holt asked Dana, where was she? But their call was cut short before she could answer. She was like, oh my gosh, he's getting out of the shower. I got to go. That was it. I didn't, I didn't get to say I love you or anything. That day, surveillance cameras showed Dana Hall getting off a train at Eddie Bernice Johnson Union Station in Dallas before an unknown man approaches outlets that was reported. He helps her with her luggage and they leave. So this is another situation that, you know, we don't know who this guy is. You know, and she called her mom and she was in fear of her life. After learning about the video from the police, Holt's family drove from St. Louis to Dallas and started passing out flyers, okay, at the train station. And, you know, it's just really sad. It's just really, really sad. You know, I, I really wish she would have told somebody where she was going and you know what we all are adults as women we are grown we live on our own and we have our own life going on but there's nothing wrong with letting somebody know where you are or where you're going and with the way things going on now there's nothing wrong with letting your family know who you are with it is important it is important for us to let our family members know hey i want to date but here's who i'm on a date with Oh, I'm going out of town with so-and-so. This is where we're going to be at. You, know, you have to, in this day and time, you have to leave information like that. It's not like you're trying to get into your business, all right? But for safety reasons, because if something happened, I want to be able to tell the police, well, listen, I heard from her this day. She said she was with this person, and they went here. You know, I don't want to be the one to tell the police, well, I don't know, because that's going to leave a really messed up feeling. But she called her mom and she sounded frantic. So this man portrayed himself to be one way, got her to his place and became who he really was. Okay. And she made a phone call to her family. She couldn't say too much because the phone was cut short. The phone call was cut short. Goodness, Lord. This stuff bothers me. This stuff bothers me. I'm a very emotional person. And when I read about this stuff and I talk about this kind of stuff, it's not that I want to bring bad news to you guys, but I'm trying to make you aware of what's going on so that maybe you can take the steps into, you know, being more aware of your surroundings and being more careful of who you talk to online. You get what I'm saying? So I hope that whoever's listening out there will know if they're going out somewhere, going out with a guy or even a guy going out with a girl, let your people know where y'all going, what she got on, because women can be just as crazy as men. And don't think of it, I want to mind my business. This is not a time for secrets. This is a time for safety. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's for safety reasons. <sighs> My goodness. My goodness. Mm, 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 mm. <clears throat> you know, I just...
just got to keep her family. You know, we just got to keep her family in prayer. We really do. We have to keep her family in prayer. Because dealing with something like this is no joke. It is no joke at all. No joke. Hmm. He won't let me leave. Her name is Dana Holt. 30 years old, height 5'9", her hair was blonde, her date of birth 11-27-1991, weight 250 pounds, her eyes are brown, last seen wearing a black jacket, black pants, tattoo on neck and chest. Miss Holt was last seen at approximately 12 p.m. on March 1st. In the 400 block of South Houston Street in Dallas, Texas. Her sister also reported, I won't stop until she finds her sister. If my sister sees this, I want her to know I love her. I would never imagine I'll be doing this. Never. She's my only sibling and I won't stop looking for her. So if anybody have any information, please help this family out and please come forward with information. You can be anonymous. So she went missing after getting off the train, meeting an unknown male. She made a frantic phone call to her mother and that was the last time they heard from her. And here we are, March 22nd, 2022. Okay. And she's still not found. Mm -mm -mm. I will make sure I will keep an eye out on this. If anybody have any updated information, you can email me if you like. Um, if you don't want to talk to me on my comment section, you can email me. All right. Okay, guys, so this is last one. Now, this last one that we're going to discuss is a male. Okay, a missing Florida male was found dead in his trunk on Friday after having an altercation with his ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend. Now, when I tell you this story hit, hit home to me, it did. This story hit home to me, okay? Detectives with the Orange County Sheriff's Office, office have arrested two people after using surveillance footage to determine how Melvin Ray Wilcox's car was stolen, okay? Mm. Lord Jesus. All right, so LaShawn, who's involved here? LaShawn Triplett was in a relationship with Will Cox for 15 years. All right. Now, Johnny Wesley was supposed to be a friend with Will Cox. So the sheriff's office said the suspects, Johnny Wesley, who's 42 years old, and LaShawn Triplett, the 43-year-old mother of Will Cox's child, ran into the victim at the Central Florida Fair on March 13th. There was a reportedly a criminal complaint filed against Wesley and Triplett after the run-in. It said that Wilcox got into an argument with Wesley at the fair. After finding out, he had been dating Triplett for about a year. A surveillance video then showed Wilcox entering Wesley's home at about 2 a.m. on Tuesday, but there was no footage of him leaving. Several people were seen in the video trying to move Wilcox Honda Civic outside of Wesley's home, and eventually someone had to start it with jumper cables, okay? Officials said someone then backed the vehicle up to the door, of the home before all the lights in the residence were turned off and a man drove the vehicle away. So that was at that moment. They did something to him in that house. They murdered that man in that house and they put his body in the truck of that car at that moment. 
Officials did not identify the driver of Wilcox's car, but they did say Wesley was seen an hour later walking back home, putting two large trash bags in his own vehicle and then driving away to return 15 minutes later. So he had, he got rid of some evidence, but they still caught the ass. Wilcox's mother was the person who reported his car missing. Authorities said she was aware of his dispute with Wesley. She said that Wilcox told her he was going to see a friend on the morning of March 15th, but that friend said that Wilcox never arrived. The mother contacted Wesley, who apparently told her that Wilcox left Wesley's house in his car after they got into a fight the other night. Wesley said he jumped he had to jump start Wilcox's car because it had been, you know, it had a dead battery. So that's the lie. That's well he did. But she, he didn't tell the mother that he had her son in the back of the truck. Investigators believe Wilcox was likely shot in Wesley's home. I believe so. And his body was moved away in the missing vehicle. Police said they, they found the victim's blood. Well, excuse me. Police said they found the victim's blood inside of Wesley's home alongside bullet holes and a 9mm shell casing when they searched the residence. Wilcox was found on Friday and officials determined he had been shot in the head and twice in the area of his shoulder and neck. My goodness. My goodness. Mm. Detectives said that to this... Mm. Wow. Oh, baby, people don't have no type of regard for no one life. Jesus. Let's continue. Mm -hmm. Detective said that Wilcox knew Wesley and Triplett, well, as he had a child with Triplett, meaning LaShawn Triplett, and they dated for 15 years. Wesley and Triplett are both facing first-degree murder with a firearm charges. The two are being held with no bail and records do not show attorneys for either Wesley or Triplett. <sighs> My goodness. My goodness. This man lost his life for what? For what? He has a, a child with Sean Triplett. Mm. Oh my goodness. West uh, Melvin Wilcox was 39 years old. My goodness. I'm glad they caught them. I, I I'm really I'm glad they caught the people that's responsible for this murder. Killed he was murdered. Like I said, he was murdered in that house, in Wesley's house. He was murdered in there. Okay. Now, the people that was trying to move the car, they should um, get in trouble as well. But anyway, the car had to get, you know, had to get jumped in order for it to move because the battery went dead. They backed the car up. And when the lights went out, that's when they put that body inside of the trunk and drove it away. Here he comes back walking and he got two large, you know, garbage bags he puts in his car and drives off but you still got caught buddy you thought you was going to get away with murder and I'm really glad that they caught both of them I'm really I'm really glad they caught both of them so now let them rot in jail because whatever was going on his life did not have to be taken and when I tell you this story hits home, man, it really does. Whew. Mm. But anyway, my goodness. I sent my prayers to his mother and the rest of his family, his daughter, you know, his child. I don't know if it was a boy or girl. But um, to his child. Now this child don't have a father. And the child don't have a mother either. Because she's gone. She's gone. The child has the grandmother. 
prayers and condolences to, you know, to the family. This is ridiculous, man. And that's why I said, that's exactly why I said, you know, men could be victims as well. Melvin Wilcox was a victim. You don't see too much of that in the paper or in the news articles like you do women, okay? You don't see too much of that. So that's why I said, you have to tell somebody. He told his mother he was going to a friend's house, you know, but he never made it there. He went to Wesley's. And look what happened. Hmm. And then Wesley, Johnny Wesley, going to tell the mother that he left. And they had to jump his battery because it was dead. Yeah, you jumped the battery. Yes, you did. But you didn't tell her you murdered her son and put him in the trunk of the car. You didn't tell her that. You didn't tell her that. But you know what? You don't even have to because she knows. And now you're going to sit in jail. LaShawn Triplett and Johnny Wesley are going to sit in jail for the rest of their lives. They, they, they need to get life in prison. They took a life. So now their life had to be in prison. Oh, Jesus. All right, you guys. I just want to bring you guys up to speed about everything. I want to give you the update on um, Miss Bajana James. You know, I'm glad they did catch her boyfriend. I'm so happy about that. But you know what? The pain is still going to be with that family for a very long time. Very long time. Now, the motive behind it, we don't know. Ashley McDonald was found. She was missing since November 2021. And they found her body. Prayers to her family. Dana Holt is still missing. She met up with an unknown male. The same as Ashley met up with an unknown male. Please let this, let Dana Holt be found. Okay. Unharmed and safe. But she is with this man that we do not know. People, be careful out there. And then we have Melvin Wilcox. Who was murdered by LaShawn Triplett, the mother of his child. And her boyfriend, Johnny Wesley, or whatever he was to her. His life is gone. Found in the trunk of his car. All right, you guys, that's all I have for today. You know, share these stories. If you heard about these stories, let me know in the comment section. And I'll talk to you guys later. All right, y'all have a good one.